<clears throat> Here comes everybody. Welcome everybody. We're so glad you guys are uh, joining us today. We're gonna wait just a few more minutes as everybody's joining the webinar right now. We'll get started in one minute. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, and good evening, I am Drew Carter from the Office of Admission at Holy Cross. I'm delighted to uh, welcome everybody, all of our viewers from across the globe to our fall open house webinar series. You know, uh, one of the questions I'm asked most frequently when talking about Holy Cross with high school students is, Mr. Carter, are you guys in the admission office at Holy Cross as funny as everyone says you are? Another question I'm asked quite often is, what is this Montserrat thing? Tonight's webinar will hopefully answer both of those questions. Our plan is to begin with a brief description of this program and then let you hear from Holy Cross students who have lived and learned in this unique program. Tonight uh, on our panel, I'm joined by the Director of Montserrat, Professor Allison Ludden, as well as uh, current Holy Cross seniors, Tara McGuire, and Beth Griffin, current Holy Cross junior, Andrew Corbett, and representing the sophomore class, Aaron Reinhardt, the pride of Wauwatosa East High School in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm also gonna strongly encourage everybody to submit questions in the Q&A box, and we can answer those as we go along. And we're also gonna be sending out several poll questions tonight. And the first one, we're gonna post right now. Um, as we do, as we post that poll, Maybe Professor Leiden, you could uh, give us a brief introduction to the program and uh, you know, give us a little idea of the structure and a basic understanding of what Montserrat is like. Thank you, Drew. I'm gonna start off by first sharing my screen. So let's see here. All right, so. Montserrat. My name is Allison Ludden, and um, I'm the director of Montserrat. And you may ask, what is Montserrat? Um, so Montserrat is the name of our first year program. And it's named for the Spanish mountain you see here, where St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuits, traveled to in order to lay down in the 1500s, in order to lay down his sword, his battle sword, and dedicate his life to faith, his faith, teaching, and to service. Before I can really highlight how Montserrat is unique, let me start with what you know. So in high school, your courses have a broad focus. You don't have a tremendous amount of choice. You have some choice. Um, and they focus on providing a foundation, for example, in building your writing skills. So you might sign up for a course called English 12, Modern Literature, and that course would be a broad survey course, right? Now, when you get to college, okay, and here I'm gonna talk about um, Holy Cross. Okay, Holy Cross is a liberal arts college. So you have many more choices for your courses. There are more interdisciplinary options and your courses will go into more depth. For example, you might sign up for in your first year for English 100, Intro to Literary Study, um, which um, in this case, um, with the introductory in English course, you'd have a focus here, um, the fiction of connection with Professor Haley, for example. Now, Professor Haley also teaches in Montserrat. So your Montserrat seminar is a small interdisciplinary seminar, and you'll have the same students for the full year. It's a year-long course. Okay? It's a two-course sequence where you pursue a topic in depth. You'll have many opportunities for out-of-the-classroom learning, and you'll great, gain a strong foundation in the liberal arts um, with uh, the focus on writing, public speaking, and you'll do some research and get introduced to the library resources, for example. And you'll live with students in your class. So where will your journey take you? It may take you 
to writing the environment, which is one of our uh, first year seminar courses in Montserrat. So in the fall, you would take a course called Tropical Fictions taught by Professor Fuentes, who's a professor in the Spanish department. And then all the students in your class would all be in the course in the spring called Fictions of the Future with Professor Haley, um, who's in the English department. Now the, the Writing the Environment course is nested within the natural world cluster. You may ask, what's a cluster? So a cluster, okay, um, is a, a cluster, uh, we have, let's see, so we have six different clusters and all seminars are nested within the cluster. So a cluster is a themed group of seminars, okay? All of the cluster students live together in one dorm. So we've got the natural world, global society, contemporary challenges, core human questions, the divine and self. So for example, in the self cluster, we've got a number of different seminars and all of those seminars would live in the same dorm. Now I mentioned that the, that the uh, course writing the environment is in the natural world cluster. Now there are a number of different courses within that natural world cluster and all of them share the same theme. All of our clusters have a theme. So for example, with the natural world this year, their theme is how natural is our world. And that theme relates to the different common experiences that students have in the cluster. So for example, they share common readings. They might read the same books or, or same um, articles. Okay, they also would experience uh, Different, different activities outside the classroom, such as they might all go to a speaker together to performance, or they might go off campus to a museum or go on a nature walk. Okay, so if you want some examples of different classes uh, that are in a particular cluster, so in the natural world cluster, Okay, last year they all lived in Clark Hall and some of the professors actually taught the courses in Clark Hall. Okay, some of the examples of um, classes within the natural world cluster are a history course called A Natural Food in America or um, Environmental Ethics, a philosophy course or Writing the Environment, which is the course that I mentioned already. already or um, we might have habitat explorations in the arts. So here are some examples of different courses okay, that exist within the natural world cluster. So this is just to give you a sense of what Montserrat is all about. I'll turn it back to our host. Thanks, Professor Ludden. And um, we have a, a bunch of questions coming in from, um, from some of our attendees. And I'm gonna just throw the first one um, Right and Aaron. Um, one of the questions we heard from people is about whether or not um, what the peer group is like within the Montserrat seminar. You know, I think one of the ideas behind the Montserrat seminar is that does give you that immediate peer group of first year students in a class in a dorm. Can you tell me what that was like um, beginning your first year at Holy Cross and to have that that group of students within that same class, your residential hall as well? Yeah, um, it was really great having um, everyone live near me in the same class all year. Um, I would come to class and it really didn't take that long for us to get that close. Like we would just start talking immediately. Once everyone got to class, people would get there early just to talk to um, everyone else. And we wouldn't only talk about the class, we would talk about kind of like what's going on in our other classes in our lives. It was really great and fun. Um, but then it was also nice to just run into people who are in my class um, on my floor or in the common room um, of my building or doing laundry or something like that, because you can always kind of strike up a conversation with them. Um, and it's really just nice to have that class that you know is going to be the same people the whole year to come back second semester to that same group. Um, and it's really comforting, especially as a first year, uh, just to like automatically have a group of people that you know you can talk to about your class and about like anything else really. Let's see how the, this transpires through the years. Uh, Andrew, you're a junior now. What's your memory of the peer group within your Montserrat seminar? And, and did that last into your junior year now? Yeah, I mean, Aaron makes a very great point um, in terms of just having people that you can strike up a conversation with while you're brushing your teeth um, or, you know, just walking around the hallways, especially in that transition from your high school year to first year of college. Um, 
but I can also attest to now that I'm in my third year of Holy Cross, which is kind of crazy to think about a little bit. Um, those kids that I spent an entire year with are kids that I see very often. And some of them ended up being very close friends of mine. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of students do take a lot of pride in their Montserrat class or their cluster in the sense that it's always something that I feel kind of an allegiance to even now. Um, so it's a great conversation starter. And, you know, some of those kids did end up being some of my closest friends, just maybe out of sheer seeing them so often or um, who knows what, but it ended up working out that way. Okay, Jeff, you're, you're at that, the, almost your experience with like class now in your senior year. Um, as you look back on Montserrat, like what do you remember most fondly about the, the group of students who was in your seminar with you? That's a great question. I think um, I'm definitely still friends with a few of them. And um, just like Andrew was saying, it's some of it's from proximity, but also just because um, you're all kind of learning how to go to college together. And so you have a lot of great experiences from not really knowing anything in September and being very nervous to um, by the end of that first semester, even just being really comfortable with each other. Um, looking back, I'm really grateful now that I'm a senior, I'm in mostly seminar based courses. Um, and so Montserrat for me was my first seminar ever. I didn't have one in high school. Um, and so that was kind of where I learned how to have a point and um, stick with it and like bring up a point in discussion and to be able to kind of debate in a very scholarly way. That was something I never did before. Um, and with my professor and then with that group of students that I became very comfortable with, um, both as friends, but also as classmates and peers and fellow scholars, um, that it really became an experience that I remember now very fondly um, as I'm trying to make a point in seminar or um, do other things like that. So that was a really great experience. Professor Ledden, uh, that brings up a good point here that, that sometimes I hear when I talk to high school students about Montserrat is, is they don't necessarily understand what seminar means. They, in high school, and we talk about Montserrat seminars. Can you just like tell us about that word and what, what the difference is between um, what they understand as a high school class and what a Montserrat seminar is? Sure thing. So a seminar is a small course, right? So there's there are fewer students in them. So with Montserrat, um, your class sizes would range between, say, 14 and, or 15 to no more than 17 students. So, you know, as everyone has discussed already, you get to know the people in your seminar quite well. But also the nature of, the, of a seminar is different from, say, a lecture-based course, where it would be predominantly the, the professor, you know, giving a lecture on a topic, right? And they may have time for discussion, maybe at the end of course, or at moments throughout the course. But really with a seminar, Seminar, the focus is on discussion. So you um, may get questions that you have to, you know, think about before class. So you have an, uh, you know, the opportunity to figure out what your point is going to be. I think that what's nice about having this small class your first year is that you find your voice in that class. You figure out that yeah, it's okay. I can I can talk in class because these folks know me and I've got time to prepare. And I think professors really provide the opportunity for everyone to connect and to contribute to the class. And the focus is on sharing in the class. So, um, and not just, you know, chit chatting about this and that, but rather taking a, you know, a close look at what you're studying and, you know, coming up with, you know, thoughtful responses to texts or to experiences. And, um, and it really provides the foundation for your other courses where you can take that voice with you and use it in your other courses. All right, Tara, I want to take you back to the good old days um, uh, of high school. Um, tell us where you went to high school, and then also, like, what was that transition like to Holy Cross? And let's be on topic. Um, if, if you can come up with ways in which you think maybe Montserrat helped that transition of the, the nervous freshman coming to Holy Cross. Yeah, high school, four years ago, wild. <laughs> um, but in high school, I went to, so I grew up in New Jersey. I went to the, my town's public school, really enjoyed it. It was nothing like Holy Cross and nothing like college classes, but I felt like I had a good foundation. And then coming to Holy Cross, Montserrat definitely was what Professor Lennon was saying. Like it helped me find my voice in the classroom. I am a listener. I 
tend not to talk a lot in conversations just to begin with, but some being in a seminar class for the first time and having Montserrat around comfortable students and really having that close-knit feel allowed me to be able to feel confident to speak up and maybe speak up in a way that disagreed with someone that used to terrify me to like have a different opinion from the group. And I fully admit that. And it, it definitely built my confidence in the classroom, but also like just in life and having to discuss different and hard things. My monster out was the arc of social injustice. So every week we were tackling kind of a touchy topic, it felt like, but we were all very comfortable with each other to speak about, you know, where we viewed it before the week's readings, where we view it now. And um, we were able to be honest with one another about like how we were feeling on the topic. Uh, that's great, Tara. Also, uh, we're getting lots of questions about how students choose um, their class. Could you talk a little bit about that? And I know sometimes students fear not being happy with the course that they end up in. Um, I hear that from high school students, not from Holy Cross students. So I wonder if you could speak to that as well. Sure. So um, what we do is um, we plan out the courses well in advance. So this year we have 51 different seminars and the students get that information early on. So you've got lots of time to look at them. Um, and then we ask students to pick six. Okay. And we guarantee that you will get one of those six seminars. And we've I've never had a problem where and where students haven't been able to get one of their six. We don't have people rank them because then it would be nearly impossible to, you know, guarantee that people could get their top their top seminars, but we do guarantee that you will get one of your six courses. And I've haven't had students who come to me going, "Oh, I need to get out of that seminar." It just it just doesn't happen. You know, once you get into the class and you realize, I mean, one of the things is that they're from that each of the courses ha have dis multidisciplinary perspectives. So even if you think, "Oh, I don't know if a, an English course is the right course for me," um, the professors incorporate multiple perspectives and make it a little easier for folks to kind of connect with the particular discipline they're coming from. And so, you know, students have been very happy. Erin, you came from so far to come to Holy Cross from the great state of Wisconsin. Can you talk about what it was like coming to a new part of the country and then what your Montserrat seminar and like um, what that experience was like to get accustomed to life at Holy Cross? Yeah, um, so coming from Wisconsin, it definitely was a little daunting um, because I knew like I was so far from home. It was a plane ride, like not just like an hour drive. Um, but when I got to school, I really found that um, I didn't get homesick that much, uh, which I found to be pretty lucky. But I definitely think that Montserrat helped me integrate into the school so well. And I think how like warm and welcoming everyone was really helped me not be homesick. Uh, my Montserrat professor was great and he just automatically what, um, just tried to be really warm and uh, like made it clear like this isn't just a class where I'm coming to lecture and teach you like this is more of like a communal thing. Um, it's about kind of like growing and, and adjusting to college. Um, so it was really nice like like I said earlier like having those people um, in my class to always see but then since my professor was so great um, and he would just be like, come into office hours just to talk. And so that was fun. My professor is actually from um, Chicago, Illinois. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and so not very far away. So I got to like bond with him about the Midwest. Um, so that was really great. And I just feel so lucky that um, I had such a great transition to college. And I definitely think it wouldn't have been the same if I didn't have Montserrat. Andrew, can you tell me what, um, when you were in high school and you were deciding to come to Holy Cross, what you thought you wanted to study? and how your Montserrat seminar matched with that or did not match with that and, and what that reality was like for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I actually remember coming to this exact panel when I was a prospective student. And um, I remember each of the students that was up there then saying, you know, my Montserrat, my Montserrat. And the word my kept sticking with me because it was very clear that they had taken something away from their class and it wasn't just a class that they took their first year when they were in college. Um, so when I came in here, I actually, as all students do, came in undeclared and had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. Um, but my Montserrat was called Identity, Diversity, and Community. 
and it had a little bit of a community service aspect uh, known as CBL, community-based learning. And mine was at a healthcare center and through my community service once a week, I really started to fall in love with the science aspect of um, technology, healthcare work, that kind of stuff. Um, so now I'm currently a chemistry major on the pre-med track and I do attest a lot of, um, I guess my future plans to my monster rock course that first year of school, first year of school. That's awesome. Professor Ludden, is there any change or shift from year to year in the clusters or in the courses and how much variety is there? Sure. So the clusters stay the same every year. So we have the, the same six clusters. Um, but the faculty teaching in the in the clusters changes. Um, I think that when people take the time to develop these interdisciplinary courses, whether it's a course that they're teaching on their own or a course that they're pairing up with another faculty member to teach, they generally want to teach it more than one year. So we tend to have you know people who teach in the program for a couple of years, and then they may go back and teach more courses in their department, then come back in and teach. So we tend to have you know I'd say about um, half of the courses stay the same from one year to the next, but they're always, you know, they're always evolving. So we always have, you know, new people coming into the program and then people cycling out. So um, there's, you know, it's always fresh. I think that people are, um, you know, even if they've been teaching a course for their while, for a while, they might mix it up a little and do some, you know, bring in new, you know, perspectives. So it's, it, it tends to stay pretty vibrant and with the times. This is a great moment. I'm going to um, throw up another poll question for our attendees. Um, we get a sense of uh, what sort of interests lie out there. Um, thanks for your participation in these polls. Um, Beth, my next question is that, you know, I've heard from so many students over the years about some of the experience that, experiences they have outside of the classroom as it relates to their Montserrat seminar. It's been uh, a while since you were a first year student, but do you have any memories of any experiences like that? Absolutely. So um, my first experience actually at the Joyce Contemplative Center or one of them was through my Montserrat. Um, we went, I think it was just like a random Tuesday afternoon for this little um, like yoga retreat. Um, and it was a really interesting way to connect with a lot of other peers, especially my Montserrat was called How They Got Away With Murder. And it was a philosophy seminar about genocide. Um, so very heavy topics, but um, it was with a Jesuit regent. So he was really great uh, and kind of guided us through a lot of these really difficult topics with really difficult, um, specifically like French and European philosophy. So it was a very challenging course, but I would say we went to the Joyce Contemplative Center for that retreat. Um, we also saw a performance. Um, there was a cluster performance. Um, we'd watch films sometimes with our clusters. Um, so I have um, a lot of fond memories of especially bonding with my classmates at these um, types of events, but also then kind of informing my like understanding of um, philosophy a little bit better. You know, uh, the Contemplative Center is one of those hidden gems. Uh, any other students been out there Tell me uh, an experience you had out there, whether it was part of Montserrat or not. And um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and presume, tell me what you love about being out there. It is definitely my favorite part of campus. And I, it's not even a part of our main campus, but it is amazing. I've done more than one retreat every single year. And it's just, the you're surrounded in nature and it's just so beautiful. The food is amazing. Me and my friends always rave about how we're so well fed after retreats and weekends spent there, but it's the perfect way to step away from the busy lifestyle I can have at Holy Cross and have that moment to reflect and just kind of check in with myself, but also make friends and meet new people. So I absolutely loved every time I've been there thus far. For those who, who don't know, um, the Joyce Contemplative Center is about 15 minutes away from campus. Um, it's 52 acres up on the top of a hill overlooking the Massachusetts Reservoir and surrounding woodlands. And it is um, one of the most special places I've spent time, um, not just because of the delicious food out there, but um, just it's a really special part of campus um, that's uh, so close by. And um, I think most Montserrat seminars in the past have made a trip out to um, the Contemplative Center. Is that true, Professor Ludden? Um, Erin, did you go out to the Contemplative Center last year with your Montserrat seminar? 
Um, I was actually supposed to, but we were sent home in March before um, we could go. So unfortunately, I haven't been. Um, but when we're back on campus, I definitely know I'll be making a trip out there. Andrew, any visits out to the Contemplative Center? Yeah, so my first year, we took a trip as uh, just a class during when our Montserrat would have met. Um, and I remember being there um, and we went through a mass, which was so random, but um, it's beautiful. It overlooks a valley. Um, and I remember we do a lot of self-reflection in our class and just taking a moment to enjoy being 15 minutes away from campus. And you think you're in a whole different world out there. Um, but just taking a second to reflect on what was going on in my first year um, in a totally different environment, but um, in a beautiful, beautiful space. Tara, did you have any um, outside of the um, classroom experience as a part of your Montserrat seminar that you can remember? Yeah, so I also did community-based learning the full year during my Montserrat and absolutely loved it. I was a mentor to a six-year-old boy who went to school in Worcester and it was a part of an aftercare program with Assumption. Um, it was a great experience. It really helped me understand, bridge the gap between what I was learning in class and how to make it a reality because often we would talk and read about these heavy topics of the injustice we see in our world and then we bring it into like how we see it in our own lives and then even closer to home like how do we see it in Worcester and then we flip the conversation and talk more about well how do we change this how do we make the world a better place for more people um, so it was a great way to take what we were talking about in class and make it a reality I also went to the Joyce Contemplative Center for an evening meditation prayer and dinner with my Montserrat but also with my Montserrat cluster which was a really fun experience to meet all the other cluster members and just have some time to get away from campus and because we were talking about social injustice, we often went to a lot of uh, campus events that like brought in speakers to talk about um, topics across the board. We went to different club events through the multicultural student organizations. Um, we went to like Unity Week speakers, but we also participated in some of like the fishbowl lectures that are available. So letting all of our, um, all our attendees to all of our high school students are, um, in the midst of some um, unusual senior year, um, whether they're fully in person, or whether they're remote, or whether they're hybrid, how is Montserrat operating this year for Holy Cross students? So as you guys know, we are fully remote. So um, all of our Montserrat seminars are fully remote, but the cluster directors have all been at working together with cluster faculty, have come up with some really creative ways to bring people together. So um, we have some musicians who've come in to perform for a cluster, um, and then they have breakout sessions with individual workshops, so small workshops. We've really focused on having some small group experiences so that people can still get to know people within their cluster and kind of a mingle environment, you know, where you're, you're able to kind of have some free time to talk. Um, I think some of the clusters have done uh, scavenger hunts where they have students, you know, try to learn about different aspects of campus by attending different, different um, talks, but then also, you know, checking out people's web pages or syllabi. Um, we've also um, had events where, you know, students just come together and, you know, share a meal, you know, bring your dinner and sit down and let's, and let's, um, you know, have a more informal session. So we've had formal speakers, informal speakers, speakers and then just, you know, um, more gathering sessions where people just gather and chat. It's challenging, you know, as you guys know, to be, you know, all remote, but we're really, um, what's nice about Montserrat is they're ma really making a concerted effort to have students have the opportunity to just hang out together. Beth, can you tell me um, uh, what you remember most about your Montserrat professor? And, you know, because I know one of the things that high school students worry about so often is, what are high school, what are college professors gonna be like? And I think that's um, what makes students So can you talk about your Montserrat professor a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned, my philosophy or my Montserrat professor was a Jesuit. Um, he was actually a Jesuit regent. So he was still in the process of learning how to become a Jesuit. It takes 11 years apparently. Um, and he actually just got ordained a few weeks ago. Um, so he was a really great um, resource for us. He was very, um, kind of like by the book professor, exactly how you'd expect a Jesuit to run a philosophy class. 
Um, and it was a little intimidating at first, honestly, especially because I was so unfamiliar with the seminar environment. Um, and then to come in and have like philosophy with this Jesuit. And I was like, I don't know anything about philosophy, um, but he was really approachable. Um, I loved going to his office hours. He was definitely the type of professor where I would just show up to his office hours and we would just chat about like not philosophy. Um, and we just chat about like pretty much anything, um, which was really great. And so he's actually someone I've stayed in contact with since my first year. Um, he had to go to Boston College to finish learning how to be a Jesuit. Um, but he's been a really great resource and he was a great resource for me, especially my first year. I think those professors, I'm not a professor, but I think those professors have a really good grasp on student growth throughout the whole year because they see you from the beginning of your first year uh, when you're so scared. It was my first college class ever. Um, and then by the end of the year, once you've kind of found your footing a little bit, you have a few friends, you know how college kind of works now. Um, and so they have a really great opportunity to see you grow personally, but also academically um, as a writer, as a scholar, um, as a philosopher, as a historian, whatever it is. Um, so he was a really great kind of mentor for me throughout my first year. Um, and I would say still is today. All right, can you talk a little bit about um, writing? I know a lot of times the, the, um, the level of writing increases when you get to the college level. And I think hopefully one of the things you uh, learn as a first year student is how to write at the college level. Did your Montserrat help in any way with your writing ability? My Montserrat definitely helped with my writing abilities. Uh, I was terrified to write my first college essay and my first college essay was in my Montserrat class. And my professor said it right off the bat. She's like, I'm giving it to you early so you can learn here before you learn in other classes because this is your first year class. Uh, and at the time I was freaking out. I was like, oh God, it's coming. It's gonna, it's not gonna go well. Um, but I soon realized that it was, I'm so happy she was upfront about it and like let us do it so early on, even though we were still tr transitioning and getting used to college. It was really helpful to have that so early on. And my monster professor made deadlines that wasn't just like, okay, turn in your final paper for me on this date. Um, she understood that it was a, all of our first experience of college writing and what it meant to us. So she worked through what she was looking for from us and what generally people look for um, in their college writing. So we had workshops on it in class. She'd pause for 15 minutes and check in with us like weeks before the essay. Um, she connected us to all different academic resources and it was so helpful the whole year just to learn about everything so early and in advance and she would return the papers and then be so willing to go over them afterwards, but also would provide feedback. Like she would always encourage us to go back and revise and then she'd look at it again. Um, she often, it wasn't changing of the grade, but it was helpful for growth. And she appreciated the time that we took to develop our own skills because she knew that it would benefit us in the long run. And Professor Leiden, I um, the Montserrat Seminar is one of four classes that a student will take during their first year. Um, and I know sometimes students feel like they're, they won't be advancing towards what they think their major is going to be if they're, if they're sacrificing one of these courses, both in the fall and the spring semester of their first year. Can you talk about what the, the, the philosophy of Montserrat being that this is part of the development while not necessarily perhaps contributing towards their eventual major? Sure. Um, you know, we've designed Montserrat to provide the foundation in the liberal arts, right? So, you know, as Tara attested, you know, you, we focus on development of writing skills, and that's academic writing that can be, you know, used in any you know, major that you eventually, you know, decide, right? Um, and it's, it's for the full year, um, because it really does take kind of the arc of the full year, and professors use the full year to develop those writing skills, right? And I think that um, also the fact that we bring in multiple discipl disciplines, so they're all interdisciplinary seminars, so you, um, you'll get some, you know, as Andrew attested, you'll get some science, you might get some science in there, but together with the writing, you know, um, you'll get, um, you know, exposure to philosophy, perhaps in a psychology class, right? So you'll get exposure to lots of different disciplines, even within your Montserrat class, okay? But also each of the Montserrat courses counts towards your graduation requirements. We have common area requirements. So as you are kind of trying to decide, okay, which, 
which common area requirements do I want to, um, you know, kind of address it through my different courses in my first year, your Montserrat course will count for one of them. So you are kind of progressing in terms of your requirements and it will help you to figure out, you know, what your interests are and to kind of get exposed to multiple disciplines. We have another question that sort of reflects a little bit on something Andrew said. Did anyone else um, from the, the content in the Montserrat seminar, did anyone else either discover a potential academic interest or maybe discover something that would not surely be a potential academic interest based on what you um, came in contact with in your seminar? Um, I, so my Montserrat was Immortality in Ancient Greece and Rome. First semester we focused on Greece, second semester we focused on Rome, and it was like mythology, history. It was a literature course, but it didn't always feel like an English class because um, you're doing more like literary analysis. But um, so that uh, was taught by a classics department professor, Professor Joseph. And um, I had some um, familiarity with the classics before I took um, a few years of Latin in high school. And so it was on my radar. Um, but honestly, I never would have thought that I would have any interest in classics really beyond a little bit of Latin. Um, but I took the course and I realized how much I love like looking at these texts and making connections to modern day. Um, and actually my uh, professor, he kind of convinced me to look more into the classics. So right now I'm taking Greek. Uh, I really would not have done that if it weren't for him, like at all. Um, and so I'm considering adding classics as my second major. Um, and that just would not have happened if it weren't for Montserrat. And so I'm really thankful for that because I found something that I absolutely love. So um, before everybody joined in, um, Andrew and I were reminiscing about when he and I chatted when he was a high school senior in the April of his senior year when he came to check out Holy Cross one last time to decide if, um, if he should come to Holy Cross. And he and I had a conversation, unfortunately, while the Holy Cross marching band was playing, so I'm not sure either of us heard what the other was saying, but let's just pretend for the sake of this conversation that during that moment, I was trying to sell you on Holy Cross based on the value of the Montserrat program, okay? You now know the value of the Montserrat program, Andrew. So to our uh, attendees here today, tell them why you think um, Montserrat is such a special thing and why, you know, therefore Holy Cross is such a special thing. Yeah, um, I don't know if I can sum it up in just a couple of words, but basically it's the best transition into a college environment that I could have asked for um, because it's really a living learning experience where you are taking classes and you are at the same time making friends because those kids in your classes are living on the same hall as you and you're also in that same class with them for an entire year. Um, it's also a great introduction to the Holy Cross mindset, I think, because, you know, my class was diversity, inclusion, um, and community. And I would have never really have picking chosen, sorry, that class as, you know, now a chemistry major, but being in the divine cluster and being a, um, I guess it's a religion course, uh, taught me how to look at things in a different light, which I think was a very important part of my Holy Cross experience so far. Um, you know, I don't think in one mindset in as a scientist, you know, that I need to try and find the exact answer to everything, um, especially being in a seminar that's religion based. It was really nice to hear other people's perspectives on different things and you know everybody coming from a different background talking about diversity and inclusion um, you know not not always having the answer and being able to listen to other people that you're in a class with and also living with was really awesome transition into college and um, Tara when you think back upon uh, your mantra it's been obviously a couple years but did it change the way you thought about what kind of student you'd be at the college level or what kind of student you'd think be at Holy Cross or um, the kind of things you might want to study while you're in college? Yeah, I, I was trying to think of my answer earlier and I don't know how to pinpoint exactly how Montserrat helped me grow into what I, my interests were. I always 
in high school, I was a person that wanted to be around people and I help others. So the idea of being in the social injustice class made sense for me. So I loved it. It was really enjoyable, but I think the way it really helped me kind of decide what I wanted to do at Holy Cross was the idea that I actually was in one of the Montserrat that has two different prof professors. So in a, the fall, I had a psych professor and in the spring, I had a history professor. So it just opened up the topic in a different way. And it really made me understand the idea of looking at everything in a different lens. And I, I think it challenged me to take classes that made me uncomfortable or push my boundaries. Um, a lot of my classes this semester even reflect the same things um, of I'm taking a liberation class this semester. So like still engaging in all of those social issues really sparked within me. And I have continued doing CBL and all different like mentoring and volunteering within our own community here in Worcester. But I also think it allowed me to understand just like our place in this world, especially like as a young student, like how I can use my voice to help others. And it made me get involved in different things that I never would have expected. But academically, I came in undeclared, obviously, and I knew I wanted to go into psychology. So it also helped me reaffirm what I thought I would like to do. Having a psych professor for the first semester really allowed me to engage and kind of, I would go to office hours all the time and not talk about our monster, talk about the potential of being a psych major, which I now am. So it's just a great avenue to feel connected and supported in every aspect of my college experience. All right, Beth, I'm going to give you the last question tonight and let, allow my, uh, my two seniors to be the last people who spoke. Um, so we're, we're all still a part of Holy Cross while we're not all at Holy Cross. Um, and if Montserrat is really a sort of a prototypical Holy Cross experience, um, I'll just keep the question simple. What do you miss most about Holy Cross right now? Um, that's a really great question because I do think Montserrat's a really great microcosm of everything that um, I think is special about Holy Cross. Um, and I think it's honestly, I say this at the end of my tours too, um, I love the community of Holy Cross um, and that's something I'm definitely missing right now. Um, Holy Cross is a very friendly and warm and welcoming community. You should find this in Montserrat and you see it in the community in general. Um, and everyone is kind of friends with each other. If you don't know someone, you definitely have a mutual friend. Um, and you just, it's a matter of time before you figure out who it is. Um, so I definitely miss that kind of community and camaraderie feeling. Um, at Holy Cross, we're very academically rigorous, but not competitive in the kind of like cutthroat sense. Um, and so for all those reasons, I think that Montserrat is a really great introduction to this kind of Holy Cross community. It's warm, it's welcoming. Um, it kind of like helps you grow um, and is with you when you struggle and it kind of helps you cultivate into this like kind of new um, and into like the best ver version of yourself. Um, Holy, Holy Cross and specifically Montserrat embody a Jesuit principle, I think really well called Cura Personalis, which means care of the whole person. Um, Montserrat and Holy Cross just doesn't just care about you as a student learning academically. We also care about you um, growing emotionally and physically and socially um, and finding, like Kara said, kind of like finding your place in this world. Um, and so I think Montserrat's a really great introduction to that whole experience. Um, and for me throughout my college career has just kind of been this really great um, mentoring um, part of my experience and something I definitely miss. Okay, I, I, I was seniors being the last one to speak. Erin, uh, I want to hear from you last because you are um, our sophomore, the one who has the most recent experience in Montserrat. Um, can you um, tell me what, what, um, why you chose Holy Cross? And um, having been now a Holy Cross student for over a year, what your favorite thing about Holy Cross is. Yeah, um, so I knew in high school that I wanted to go like far away from home um, and um, Holy Cross was a great option. I um, Holy Cross was one of the last schools I toured actually. I didn't tour until after I got in. Um, and so everything was kind of like lined up on paper. I knew it was a great school. I was like, okay, I'll probably like it. But so I came, toured, I had a great tour experience, but I think what really like solidified it for me um, was the people that I met when I toured. My um, friend from home, she has a dad who's a history professor in Milwaukee. 
And um, he like knows various history professors across the country. And so he connected me with Professor Conley at Holy Cross. And then she was willing to meet up with me after my tour. And so she kind of took me around, told me about the history department. I specifically remember her talking about Montserrat. And I think that's where it kind of clicked, where I understood what it was finally. Um, but I think just her and everyone else I met being so warm, so welcoming, so just um, so excited about Holy Cross, I think was what really made me um, choose there. Um, and also I like to throw in, it's just a beautiful campus. So it was so pretty. And I was like, oh, well, of course I would want to go here. Um, and then for what I miss most, um, I think it just, the people kind of like what Beth said, like the community is just so great. Um, I've been thinking a lot about what I miss about being on campus. Um, but I think just like going to club meetings, like seeing people on, um, like my walk to, uh, to class and just like talking with people who I wouldn't necessarily talk to otherwise, or just maybe I'm not super close friends with. Um, I was a greeter in the admissions office last year. I realized I missed my greeting shift because I could just talk to people who I didn't know uh, beyond that, other students and then prospective students. Um, so yeah, I think it's just the little things of running into people, talking with people, like meeting up with people to study and things like that, um, yeah. I just miss talking to everyone. <laughs> thanks so much, Erin. And, and thanks, I wanna say an enormous thanks to all of our uh, panelists and attendees for your participation and your attention tonight. Um, it was great um, seeing your faces. It was great hearing your questions to all of our attendees. Uh, please continue to engage with us. Um, we are here to help. And please continue to, to follow the rest of our webinar series uh, for the next five weeks. We are uh, really working to answer your questions. All of these webinars are based on the most frequently asked questions we get in the fall from high school seniors. That is how we design this. I hope tonight was helpful. Um, have a great week, everybody. Uh, stay safe, uh, stay healthy, and uh, keep in touch. Thanks. <laughs>